Hello everyone and welcome back to another video here on Ghost Paper. And for today's video, I wanted to really show some examples here on when and how is best to use Alpha Lock, Clippy Mask and Layer Mask. So I've prepared a very special file here, which has three groups and each one of these groups, we're going to really focus on when and how to use Alpha Lock here. What are some of the best use cases? Then we're going to talk about the best use cases for Clippy Mask. And then we're going to talk about the best use cases for Layer Mask. So without any further ado, let's get started. So the very first one is going to be Alpha Lock. So I'm just going to bring this much closer here on the iPad. And basically, when is best to use Alpha Lock? Alpha Lock is really, really good when you have an illustration, whether you're doing a simple fruit or a realistic drawing of a portrait, a face, and you want to add color to a layer, but you don't want to paint on any other elements. So to give the best example right here, I'm just going to create a new layer on top of my chain of layers here on this fruit. And in terms of brush, I'm just going to be use, uh, I'm going to be using actually my studio pen because it's going to be um, very easy to set that as an example. Now, say I want to add some color to my orange. In this case here, my orange is looking quite flat. You can't really see the depth. You can't really perceive depth because it's missing shadows, highlights, everything. We just have the basic colors right here. And if I were to start painting some secondary colors, onto this fruit, I could do something like this. But then as I go about that, as you can see clearly, this is painting on uh, on the outside of the fruit. And I don't really want to do that. So I would have to be using the eraser tool. I'll have to be sort of eyeballing like, how do I, how much do I want to take it out? Is this going to really work here? Am I going to really get to the to the actual outline that I want? So. I can start painting and erasing, and that's already a laborious process just to get to where we want, which is to add some depth, some feeling of curvature here. And I could even do more to give you that example because as you, as you can see here, this is a flat color. If we were to add some depth, I would do some Gaussian blur, and I would kind of try to blur this, this color so that as you can see, we're starting to give some gradation to this fruit, but it's now blurring everything that's outside. And that's a bit of a nightmare. We really don't have time for this. Like we want to get our point across. We want to get to where we want to go as, you know, as productive as possible. So I'm just going to delete this layer right here. And I'm going to head into the actual layer that I want to add that feeling of depth. And I'm going to just make sure by turning on and off that I'm on the right layer. I'm going to tap on that layer and select Alpha Lock. Now that I have Alpha Lock, you see a little checker pattern just behind that layer, which is telling me that Alpha Lock is turned on for this layer. And now going with the same layer, my Studio Pen, I can draw freely on this layer, knowing that I'm only drawing to the boundary of that layer. I'm not going to, I can try to paint here on the leaf and nothing is happening. I can try to paint on the background and nothing is really happening. That is because we have Alpha Lock turned on. Now, what are the best use cases for Alpha Lock is really to be using in combination with these colors is to be using the smudge tool. And I'll tell you why. So now with the smudge tool selected, we're going to be using under the airbrush submenu. We're going to be using the soft brush. I'm going to make sure this has like sort of a decent size. And now I'm just making sure to show you that all of those colors are compacted. They are together into one layer. So now if I smudge it, I start to get this really nice shading, which feels like what I was just saying at the beginning. We're adding some depth to our orange. We're adding this really nice feeling of gradation from the lighter orange to the darker shade of orange. Now, if I go into my layers panel, select that little element, which is the top of my orange, select that layer, tap on it and 
go once again alpha lock on that layer and I do the same thing I got my studio pan so I'm only going to do a little bit here more or less so now I'm gonna use my smudge tool I'm gonna to smudge that part and now I may have overdone here so I'm just gonna do like a little bit and and then stopping it now as you can see I've added a little shadow to that or volume per se to that top section so now I have my completed fruit with depth and that is the best use case for alpha lock now what are some of the cons for or you know things are not so good to use on alpha lock well you see the problem is on alpha lock the minute that I hit gallery right here on procreate procreate is going to save the file and it's going to lose all of the undos and the history within this file so if I want to make any changes to the shading and the colors of this fruit I'm gonna to have to recreate this asset or at least I'm gonna to have to select this layer and fill it with a lighter color orange and sort of start that process from scratch and that is because alpha lock is painting everything into one single layer so please keep in mind if you are working quite a bit with alpha lock make sure to have backups make sure to uh, back up your group layers or have a backup of that file even in uh, back in gallery mode just make a duplicate of your illustration file because the changes done in alpha lock once you save are done forever so now let's move on to the second one which is clipping mask what are some of the best ways to use clipping mask in procreate so for that I've prepared a an initial uh, illustration right here which I'm just going to open the group layer and it's literally a chess pawn which already has some shading already has some volume to it I want to be able to really just show what clipping mask can do for us and there is a background which I've already treated and I believe there will be a video that I'll put on the top right section here of this video that shows you how to actually draw this pawn if you if you're interested from scratch but here we go so let's say we have this illustration and let's also say that you're doing this for a client or some project that you're working on but the client is now asking that you know the illustration is still looking a little bit flat they want to see uh, more textures perhaps like a feeling a bit more realism and more of a tactile feel to this chess piece so I've prepared a couple textures here I'm just gonna turn it on and it's at normal blend mode at 100% opacity and I know that right now it looks pretty weird it looks like some dirt it looks like I spilled some coffee on my iPad or something but that is not the case I'm going to show you guys how awesome this can be so as you can also see this texture is fully on top oops I'm moving the wrong layer this texture is fully on top of everything else right it's not really masked it's not it's covering the both the background and the chest spawn so what we can do with with clipping mask is that we can tap on this layer and select clipping mask now magically as you can see the texture is only being applied to its parent layer which is the chest spawn if I turn off the chest spawn the texture also disappears but if I turn just the texture off the chas pawn doesn't disappear and that is the relationship between a child layer or a clipping mask layer and its parent layer so I can tap on the parent layer and tap on the plus icon as many times as I want and all these layers that are just you know within that first one that I've selected as clipping mask and my parent layer all of these layers are set already as clipping masks and anything that I do here I'm just gonna use you know my studio pen just as an example I can paint any areas just like alpha lock and it's only affecting the parent layer but clipping mask has a huge advantage onto alpha lock that alpha lock doesn't have actually there's two advantages so I'm just going to first delete these layers I just created I'm just gonna keep that texture layer the first one is that I can turn these layers on and off I can go ahead and save my file and I can go back and if I'm not happy with the texture all I have to do is turn it off so the work that we're doing here is non-destructive work when compared to alpha lock which is destructive as soon as you've done it and saved it 
that is it. That's the first thing. The second thing is that once I tap on the, the little uh, si uh, symbol here for it, blending mode, clipping masks allows you to use blending modes. And in this case, we're gonna roll all the way to overlay, which uh, burns the black values into your image as darker values, but still blended with the base color value. And values of white, it also burns, but more like additive in additive mode. So because the texture was more on the dark side of things, it really gives this really nice feeling of uh, a wood texture. And it's giving this really nice wood texture to our chest pawn, just like the feedback from the client, which is giving uh, to us in our, you know, fantasy example right here. So now we have some texture applied to this chess piece and I have prepared some other layers right away. They are not clipping masks, but just to show the beauty of blend modes, I have this paper texture set, set as color burn and I have another one that I've set as an overlay with, uh, I, I guess, uh, at 100% opacity, which gives me a little bit more texture. And once I put these three texture layers on, as I'm just doing here right now, we add this really, really nice tactile feel to our illustrations. So once again, clipping masks are amazing for creating work that's non-destructive, that respects the boundary of the parent layer, and also allows you to play with blending modes and opacity. So let's go to our last example, which is a layer mask. So layer mask is something also incredibly powerful in Procreate and just like Clippy Mask, it is also non-destructive. So what is actually layer mask? So basically let's take a look at this example. We have like a simple plant pot. We have two leaves and they are looking quite identical. They're looking pretty much the same. Again, let's say that you're doing this as a t-shirt design, perhaps for a client, and they were just asking for a little bit more a variation between the two leaves. Now you could be doing that, but you don't know yet if the client's going to be happy, if their client's going to be satisfied with those with those changes or, or that update. So here's a quick way that we can add some visual interest to these leaves. We're gonna tap on this layer right here, which is my leaf layer. I'm gonna tap again, set that as mask. Now, basically Procreate uh, creates a layer on top of that layer you selected called layer mask and immediately changes our color from whatever color you had here to a pure value of black or a pure value of white. So I'm just gonna tap here to go into the color value and what I'm trying to say is that a pure value of black is going to obscure things from your parent layer. A pure value of white is going to reveal them back. So to give a quick example, we're gonna be using just our normal studio pen, which is just a monoline brush. I'm gonna set this to maybe 20% here, and I'm gonna create some difference between these two uh, leaves. So here, I'm just gonna draw these lines. Maybe I do like one, two cuts, and I do maybe like one cut on this side. And then on this guy here, I'm just gonna do a single cut on this side. So now, we've created very, very quickly in a matter of seconds, we've created some differences between the first and the second leaf. And once again, if the client's not happy with that, you can turn off the layer mask and go back to the original. You're not destroying anything. You can save the file and your layer mask will still be uh, with the possibility of being active or not. You can turn it on and off. Or if the client says, you know what, I, I, I wanna take it back, but um, in case you don't wanna just turn off the layer, you can go back to the same pen you're using, tap and hold on the color. Basically what happens in layer mask is that we're switching from the total uh, black shade into the, uh, the uh, white tone. So have our layer mask selected and we're gonna paint it back, revealing those pixels that we once had, uh, you know, the information. I actually can see, I'm just gonna undo this because I can see it's not quite there and I know why. I know it's because our brightness level is set to 94% and not at 100%. So I'm just gonna make sure saturation is zero, brightness set to 100. Now, making sure I'm on the layer mask selected, I'm gonna go here and fill it 
and it magically fills with that same tonality. So I, I hope that this video is very informative for you. I hope that like very quickly you can see and spot the differences between doing something that's going to be final as alpha, alpha lock. It's really great for, you know, using the smudge tool and for blending colors, you know, creating really nice gradations. Then you have the power of clipping masks to create textures, to add tactility to your images, to create as many clipping masks as you want, to draw shadows and draw highlights because you're using blending modes such as overlay, add and screen and multiply. And finally, with layer masks, it allows you to create uh, variations on your layers and your, uh, and your elements by just obscuring or revealing things around your elements in your canvas. So that's it for this video, guys. Hope you guys enjoyed it. And if you did a like, it would be super appreciated, as well as make sure to hit the subscribe button and the bell notification so you don't miss any of these tips and tricks, tutorials, and that is all to make you a better digital illustrator every single day. Now on the right side of the screen, there's always more content for you guys to watch. One is my latest video, and the other one is a video that YouTube recommends you to check it out. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you on the next one.